Okay, YouTube, this is Michael Bell back again from Torrent Performance, and uh, we're getting toward the end of this mini-series here. I actually took this bike out and rode it today. Um, only had two issues with it when I rode it. Uh, one, the speedometer didn't work. When I changed the rotor over to that Bob Moto uh, steel rotor, the speedometer runs on the sensor on the back, and I didn't even think about it, but they sent me aluminum bolts. So I was able to put the uh, original steel bolts back in the rear rotor and it, then the speed, speedo sensor started picking up and uh, having some issues with the front brakes where I uh, thought I had the front brakes bled and went out and did a, did a little rip on it and guess what, no front brakes. So, uh, <laughs> so, so I might have to work with that a little bit. Hopefully I don't have to buy too much more for this. I'm pretty much getting done with these videos. But uh, today we're going to get into the back tire. When I put the back tire on there, I put new bearings in it. And then uh, put the back tire on there, so that'll be pretty interesting. And I went with a carbon fiber rear hugger for it, and a couple stickers. So uh, yeah, that, thanks for watching, and uh, we're gonna get this bike back together, and then uh, hopefully I can start moto vlogging on it. And uh, yeah, if you're watching this and you're working on your own bike, I hope it helps. So yeah, we'll get into this. Oh, two thumbs up. Okay, and we're going to get started here. I've already got the the bike set up on the the rear uh, spool stand. And, oh, buddy, what you've got to do is you've got to find your master link on your chain. Actually, if this original chain, I think they, they riveted the chain in um, to the to the chain. Where I, when I replaced the, I replaced the front rear sprockets, uh, before I put this bike into storage that uh, the back one was really really toast But uh, I, I put a master link chain on here So you've got to break your master link off and the easiest way I've kind of Seen is to take a flathead screwdriver and pop that master link off Then what you'll want to do is take it off the sprocket Get the master link off of the sprocket and pull it off if you can be careful because you actually have well this is an o-ring chain that i put on here so there are o-rings on there and you want to save those o-rings try not to lose those a lot of people don't have extra ones i actually do so then you'll pull your master link off and that'll break the chain loose I'm actually just gonna, I'm gonna pull the chain off of here. Now, as always, when I work on this, I've got a little metallic dish that I put all my stuff in so you don't lose it. Now, these O-rings are not metallic, so keep an eye on them. Um, and then you have your, your adjusters here on the rear. What you need to do is you need to start on one side and you're gonna loosen your, your tightening uh, nut on your adjuster first to get the adjusters loose and don't just don't just try to run this the adjuster in with this not being loose because what you'll do is you'll actually you could strip the thread on the adjuster screw and actually on the other side i looked at it it was a little funny when i put the sprocket on last year and we i, I am going to be replacing these so just run your nut up and then this is kind of a tedious process but you're just gonna once you get this loose you can kind of run it in with your your fingers but um i i'm i'm gonna go ahead and run it run it loose all the way in or pretty close just off of the to get the get the tension off of the rear axle bolt big big bolt so just start on one side and then go to the other side here we'll go to the other side and now that we're on the other side here we're just going to do the same deal we're going to loosen your adjuster set bolt 13 millimeter 
And just a little pointer here, do not press on, on the rear brake when you remove this tire. Um, you will uh, you will push the the caliper out while it's not on the rotor, and then you got you could possibly have any more problems. So we've got the tension off of that now. Now what we we'll want to do is break this rear axle bolt nut. And this rear axle bolt nut is this rear axle bolt nut is a 32 millimeter. If you don't have a whole lot of tools, you might have to buy one. I can't remember if it's reverse thread or not. I don't think it was. Oh, nope, there it goes. Oh boy. It is. Oh, well, you turn it the wrong way. It ain't gonna come off. I will put the foot pounds in the description below that we're gonna you'll want to put this back to spec at hope these videos are helping somebody it takes a lot of time to do these I don't have a whole lot of time but I'm pretty dedicated to doing this I really enjoy making these and I'm just taking so much stuff apart that somebody can use this information i've got another bike so when this one's done i'm gonna bring the antique ducati over get that thing back up to shape don't lose this nut and so when that's done you may you may want to support the wheel a little bit and then just that bowl that may not want to come out oh boy I had to get my favorite tool out the old persuader Okay, you got a washer on there apparently. There'll be a spacer on the other side of the rim. And you're just going to remove. Okay, you actually want to support the the rear brake mounting system. It's not going to stay. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to run that bolt back through there. Always want to run this bolt back through there to protect the threads and the I'm noticing already that those those brake pads are just completely shot on this. We'll get to getting the brake pads. I've got a set of brake pads sitting in here.
I'm gonna get this tire off to my buddy. One other little tip for you before we go to install this tire is on this Kush drive, I, I we replaced the wheel bearings. Uh, my buddy Chris, thank God, he he got the wheel bearings put in for me. And there's actually two sets of bearings on this Kush drive. And one little tip I, I I'm going to give you here is when you go to install any of these Kush drives, don't put them in there dry. I actually coated it with anti seize on these studs. And that way, if you ever go to remove it, if you get, you know, it's got a metal housing and then this is just, it's got a metal and then rubber here. And eventually over time that these can get stuck, but I found NICs really helps you out for removing these. So yeah, just coat them with the NICs. Don't get too, too crazy on it. And you never really try to twist this off. You just push this right back in. And then you've also got your bushings um, or your spacers, your wheel spacers for your your bolt so it fits in the swing arm and because I because I have new seals that were put in here um, I'm actually I don't know if a lot of people do this but I'm gonna coat these so these will be removed if I put these in dry there's a possibility of them uh, uh, really having a hard time coming back off so we'll just put a little little grease in there just grab the grease that I've got this is kind of expensive grease to be greasing this with but that's all right this stuff will last forever too I'm actually gonna grease that the inside of that seal and when we put the bolt back in you'll wanna you wanna grease that bolt I want this thing to really dry out real fast, so I'm just going to coat it there. Then I'm going to push this wheel spacer in. Oh, yeah. There we go. And we'll do the other side here. And we'll just press this spacer in there. This way we're good to go here. Okay, we're ready to put this thing back on the bike. Now, if you're not real strong, uh, another person will help you out. This tire actually weighs a little bit more uh, than I thought. But go ahead and get this. And, and you might have a little problem with the caliper and whatnot. And just take your time doing this. Make sure the make sure the wheel's going on the right way. Some people have used anti-seize on this. You're supposed to use a decent grease. You need a whole heck of a lot on there. Get this through right in, I see this nut as well. Also, I went ahead and replaced both sides for the uh, chain adjuster blocks. I changed both the nuts 
in the adjuster bolts. They're not very expensive, and I'll give a heads up here. Uh, they're cheaper to buy these from AF1 Racing down in Texas. Uh, there's a company called Motion Pro that makes these. Um, but a lot of these Aprilla parts, some of them are actually cheaper than what you think. Um, so go ahead and give AF1 Racing a, you know, a, a, go ahead and check them out. They're, they're real, you know, like I said before, they've got the parts diagrams online, which is just worth a million bucks. And if you take something apart, you can pull the parts diagrams up and actually see how it's put together by looking at the parts. So yeah, you definitely want to check AF1 Racing out down in Texas. I buy... Well, I buy all my Aprilla parts from them because the dealer up in Chicago is a Harley dealer. And when I call them about Aprilla stuff, it's like they don't even want to deal with me up there. So, like I've said before, they don't get my business. I work way too goddamn hard for my money to be dealing with someone that acts like they don't even want to do business with me. Get the old persuader out. Best tool I own in my garage. If you have to tap this in, be be gentle with it. It'll it'll go. Okay, and then you're going to want to put your chain adjuster block on there. And don't forget your washer on your nut. It's real important that that goes on there. Also, a little tip, like I said, I would and I seize this bolt. And now that we have the tire on there, and I'll tell you one little thing I did not do that I probably should have done was I should have marked the, the adjuster box where it was because now I've got to reset the chain. And you really want to do that when the, when the tire's on the ground. Actually, you want to do it with the weight capacity on the bike and then have someone else adjust it while you're riding. But someone had mentioned to me that they thought my videos were a little too long but you know i'm trying to make these as detailed as possible so if you have these bikes you can work on it yourself so i'm just going to put this chain back on and then uh, i'll adjust it later and then i'll put the torque specs for the 
the bolt down here for the rear axle bolt um, and you can just you can just torque it to spec but yeah I really enjoy making these videos oh it's about 10 o'clock at night here I don't have a whole lot of free time so I I tend to have to do things after I get off work. Might end up having to take that front sprocket cover off to do this. I'm gonna have to, son of a bitch. Well, I guess I'll get to count the teeth on that front sprocket. One of the biggest money mistakes you can make is comparing your income to the income of others. If you're making 50 grand a year and, and I say, hey, how you doing with your finances? Oh, we're fine, we're good, we're good. Because you're, you're basically comparing yourself to other people that you know that make money. Compared to what? I go to Northwestern Mutual, I do a gig for these guys. The average earner was making 970 a year. What are they thinking? We're doing good, man, we're doing great. Compared to what? They're comparing their income at 970 to other people they've known. This is the incorrect thing to do. What you wanna look at is your potential. Your potential and the potential, if you're interested in money, the potential for earning more money on this planet. If you look at the amount of money on this planet it, it, and then look at what you earn, you're gonna be like, I'm not, I don't even exist on this planet. If you look at the amount of money you earn, 50 grand or 500 grand, and compare it to somebody in Afghanistan, you're gonna be like, I'm rich. If, if you don't have enough money, that's all that matters. If you don't have enough money to take care of your family, expand your business, go where you want, when you want, when you look at a bill at the restaurant or you look at the menu at the restaurant and, and, and the price comes and you're like, oh, I can't believe they're getting that much money for that. If you're complaining about prices, you don't have enough money. Bottom line, if you wanna understand money and how to multiply it, how to keep it, how to get it, then look at your experience when you go to Whole Foods or when you order something online, what's your experience with that? When you buy a car, is it like, is that too much money? If it's too much money, you're not making enough money right now. Oh, here we go. Got more bees in here. Oh boy, look at this one. This is a big old bee. I'm gonna have to get a bee, a, a bee professional in here to take care of these things. Get stung by one of these bumblebee cocksuckers.